Hello YouTube, this is Hitachi13, aka 13 Dragon Blade, coming at you with a very, very revised version of my engine. It's probably going to stay like this for a while. This is for the March 2013 ban list. And honestly, I am not really surprised that Konami finally decided to hit windups. Zenmaidi being a problem, they finally hit Zenmaidi. They got rid of Sangen, which made a lot of tour guide users kind of annoyed. So now they permanently want us to focus on archetypes and to say, hey, you got to use tour bus now. Yay. Not really a lot of people were happy about that. Me particularly, because I had to take down my fairy deck entirely. But I have a new deck coming up for you guys. In the meantime, let's get into the deck profile. Yeah, she's still here. Void Dragon Ninja, still very good. Just protect your back row, big beat stick, and you need to have a target for Super Transformation. She's the target. You have to have the three Hanzos because, thank God, Hanzo didn't get hit. I was kind of hoping that they would even try to hit ninjas, but considering that they're not big, and this happens to be one of my favorite decks, I'm glad that he's still at three, because I still get to abuse him and play with him. Then you need two upstarts, just because it specials a Hanzo, specials any ninja, really, if it's level four or lower, and you can make an exceed play. In this case, you would bring out the Hanzo, you would get another search, like Flame Armor Ninja and Earth Armor Ninja. He's just a searcher within himself, and he's an 18 beat stick, so straight us, essentially. This thing has a decent amount of defense, and it's also a super transformation target, like all the other ninjas. Flame Armor Ninja, it bumps itself up a level, so you can help make rank 5s with Earth Armor Ninja, which is the Cyber Dragon and the Ninja Clan. You basically use these two in a combo, and you make any rank 5 that you feel like at that particular moment. Now we are going to go into the slightly meta-ish cards that are in the deck. Because Thunder King got hit, I only ran it at 2 anyway, because it's just funny to see people see Thunder King and they're like, frickin' Thunder King. Yep. Freaking Thunder King. 19 beat stick, stop searching. It's just a stun card in general, and it's a light target that I need for a certain exceed monster I will show you later. Then we have the hand trap lineup. We have two max C's for draw power, and we have two effect veilers for effect negation. Because effect veilers fun. I used to run it at three in this deck. Big mistake. I just needed the extra space, and I'm glad that I made it. And Maxi has always, always helped me out. I can't think of a game where it was kind of useless to me. Either that or it just wasn't there at the moment that I needed it, and then later it became useless. Chaos Sorcerer, because I still don't have the BLS, but when I do get the BLS, the Chaos Sorcerer might stay in or out. I'm not really sure. Summoner Monk to help boost the Shockmaster play. And because using Upstart for Upstart and then the Hanzo would be kind of redundant. Just use this, you pitch a spell, and you pitch a trap, and then you basically make Shockmaster while getting a search. And Spirit Reaper because he's funny. Nobody will expect him in this deck, and when I pull out the Reaper, I usually start poking with it, and they're like, stop being so aggressive with your spirit reaper. I'm like, I'm going in fearless. I want to hit your hand. Turns out I always hit the good cards. Now, moving on to spells. Had some slight changes. The monster lineup really didn't change that much. I like the monster lineup, but the spells and traps, they slightly changed. So... So we're going to go with Staples first. We got Dark Hole, Reborn, Rhoda, and Pot of Avarice. You need all these in here because your graveyard is going to get filled quite quickly. So is your the fact that you need to search is just nice. And Rhoda is very nice. That's the sexy Rhoda. So 
finally, I have two pot of dualities in here. So there's three pots total. They all contain draw power. So on top of the max cheese, this also helps to stimulate the deck along with the pot of avarice. Just tons of draw power in this deck. Tons of ways to search. So essentially now my deck is faster with the second pot. Which I'm glad that they made common. And then heavy because you need heavy. And White Dragon Ninja pretty much laughs when you use Heavy Storm. These two are never going to come out. They've always been in there since my first deck ninja deck profile because they've always helped me. The girl's beautiful on the card, very divine looking art, and it's just really nice to shrink my opponent every now and then. These are staples, and again, more draw power, and also because you need the white dragon ninjas in your deck. Very, very basic lineup, and then the trap lineup, which is very steady and simple. We have a mirror force. I was thinking of going to, but I think one that's just fine. Solemn judgment, and one warning since it's kind of good now since that one, everything is balanced. And people are not just standing warning every five seconds. It's just nice to have both of them at one because they're both equally good. I actually can't wait for Mirror Force to go back to one because I'm pretty sure Konami will be like, can't be at three for very long. Can't be at two for very long. So let's just make it at one again. Anyway, three of these because you have to have three. I'm not even going to begin to explain why you shouldn't have three. All ninja deck profiles, at least from what I've seen, run three of that. And if you don't, well, try to see if you can get a place hit. Another addition to the trap lineup is Dark Bride, because I now have negation up the ass. And as you can see, I took out the bottom of this for the warning and the Dark Bride. I need some negation, and on top of having the monster and the extra deck change, because the extra deck changed slightly drastically, because I got tired of people just spamming more mails on me. And to stop that, I have these. They have helped me a lot. Compulse is a great card. It is just nice to be able to get rid of an XYZ or any big threat that your opponent has. And most of the time, you chain it to its summon, so they can't really respond with anything unless they're... The threat goes at spell speed, too. And then finally, to discuss... I keep saying finally. I always do that in most of my videos. Anyway, to discuss the side deck, it really didn't change. The extra deck, however, has a lot more exceeds in it. So let's just start with the lineup that didn't really change. Game winning card, play Norma Ninja, two of them. Protection card, two of them. Crimson Shadow Armor Ninja. I pulled a bunch of these. I'm actually kind of tired of seeing its face. I only run them at two because I don't really have space for more. I could run more, but now we're going to get into some of the new ones that I got. Some of these I got today, such as this one, number 61, Volcasaurus. Great. It is exactly like Ardeus on steroids. It basically pops a face-up monster, and it burns your opponent for it. Yeah, I can't attack directly that turn, but who cares? You can still attack, you can pop a major threat, and you can burn them for it, so... Being able to do the burn damage is actually quite nice. I'm playtesting him because he's decent. I mean, he's two level 5 monsters, which isn't bad, and he's just a nice option to go into. If not, you don't run these, because Tyrus and Ardeus are, again, staple at this point, if you can make crank 5s. I just have those three particularly, so I'll be able to go into it whenever I can. Some other new cards... Excalibur. Frickin' love this guy. As soon as I got him, Utopia was out, because I'd rather be hitting big and doing big pushes for game with this deck immediately, and my extra deck lacked that. I mean, yeah, I have the Scrap Dragon and all that, but I barely found myself making Scrap Dragon. I was exceeding all the time, so I thought about it, and I found a Excalibur to the heart, and I was just like... <clears throat> 
sure you can't hear me because my voice is kind of messed up. But I found an Excalibur kitten at Target, and I just figured, you know what? Let me use this guy. He's really good. He becomes a 4K beater basically for two turns. And the other guy, I've been wanting to get this guy. His name is Star Liege Palatimo, or else what's his American name is Romanized. And I still haven't remembered his effect too much. Basically, like um, Excalibur, he detaches both of his materials. And then you target a face up monster your opponent controls. Its attack becomes zero, and its effects are also negated. And when this card would be when this card has no XYZ material and would be destroyed by your opponent's card either by battle or by card effect and sent to the graveyard you draw one card. So again, draw power. And he's a two K beater, so he'll basically bash whatever you're trying to do with doing a decent two K to your opponent. I got this from the tin. Still swim roach. The only roach I actually care about because real roaches are annoying pieces of crap. Uh, this is a very, very cool roach. His name is Steel Swim Roach. Very popular card. Gold Roach. Stops Gore, stops Trigodia. Stops Heretics from spamming, which is nice. It's basically, I've used it against Heretic users. And very rarely when I see Gores, I'll make this guy and I'll just be like, go ahead and try to drop your track and your Gores. I will laugh at it while it's going to the graveyard. And he's a... Slightly weak beater. I've noticed that out of all rank force. Shockmaster, because this deck can actually make him just a little hard. And you know how much I love this card. I don't really need to get into detail besides the fact that it's like Crimson Shadow on a Ninja and a Book of Moon. And then to one Stardust that might come out and Scrap Dragon. Scrap Dragon I'll probably keep. And Stardust, I'm here and there with. I barely even make it anymore. So I might take it out for putting back the Gaia Knight. I just took out the Gaia Knight because I figured I would want to make a Palatimo. But Palatimo is kind of risky with only having the fact that I have four light monsters in the deck. I can still make him, but it's incredibly rare. Unless I put it in mind control, and then I'll actually... That'll make him a lot more. So, that being the case... That was at YouTube. That was my Ninja Deck profile. The card of the night, or I should say the cards of the night, will be Excalibur and Palatimo. Two of the greatest light warriors ever, and probably the powerhouses of my deck now. So, this is Itazi13, aka 13 Dragon Blade, signing off.